Welcome to my channel. This is today's version or episode of Daily News Clips. But before we get started on that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for interacting. I'm being overwhelmed by the comments. It's amazing. I, I'm really having trouble keeping up. And, and that just stuns me. As I've said many times, I, I thought I'd be lucky to get 100 people listening to me. And my gosh, I'm over 3,500 now. It's amazing. It's just amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to get to that that you see on the screen in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to be giving you links to this stuff, as I always do, so they'll be in the description, and you can look them up and read them for yourselves. But the first article is one from Cheryl Atkinson. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she was a CBS journalist until she broke off and became an independent because she wasn't allowed to report on what she wanted to report on. And she has a story titled, Federal Program Sends... 100 million plus to deceased Americans. <laughs> it has to do with the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is a part of the federal government. They actually sent out pension checks, pension checks totaling over a hundred million dollars to people that are dead. Now, where do you think that money went? <laughs> But the bigger point is, whenever a government gets big, it also gets sloppy and corrupt and, and unable to function properly. And that's what we're seeing. When you send out checks to deceased Americans, that means that you're not maintaining your roles of recipients very well. Because when someone dies, there's a death certificate for that. And you should have a methodology in place to be updated immediately when someone is deceased or within a month or two at least. I mean, think about it. They send out monthly checks. You're just going to keep sending the check after the person's in the ground. And who do you think is going to spend that money? <sighs> you know, government just is not the place to do things efficiently. It just isn't. The second article, and this one is behind a pay, paywall, so you're going to have to pay for it if you want to read it. I, I don't know if you can actually read even part of it, but you may be able to. It's from Peter Sweden, who started out on Twitter and now is a reporter. He, he reports exclusively on what's going on in Sweden. And he has an article out about birth rates suddenly collapsing and high death rates for young people in Sweden. And the interesting thing is that the change in birth rates and the change in death rates of young people coincides with the adoption of the COVID vaccine. So that's one we'll probably want to keep an eye on. Now, what I want to talk about today, the, the main topic today, is a show that I watch. And the reason why I want to bring it up is because if you're a history buff, if you're an archaeology buff, this show will probably fascinate you. It's called The Curse of Oak Island. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you um, just the, the opening uh, part of the show so that you can get a feel for it, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit. History Channel original. Now, I should say something here. Every time I, I do Oak Island on my laptop, for some reason, I have to restart it to get the visuals. So all you're going to hear right now is audio. And I apologize for that. Curse of Oak Island, followed by a new episode of Lost U-Boats of World War II. Tonight on The Curse of Oak Island. That's neat. It dates 1,200 on those logs. That's the same as a paved area. The muddy pit samples are the most interesting samples that we have. Where do you think that sample comes from? Southeast France. It's remarkable. 
We're on it. Oh, oh, oh I see something yeah. around me. Oh, it's got a design on it. It does. Hurricane's coming. There's no denying it. This could be the most dangerous day on this island. There is an island in the North Atlantic where people have been looking for an incredible treasure for more than 200 years. So far, they have found a stone slab with strange symbols carved into it, man-made workings that date to medieval times, and a lead cross whose origin may be connected to the Knights Templar. To date, six men have died trying to solve the mystery. And according to legend, one more will have to die before the treasure can be found. So that's the opening, and that will give you a, a taste of what this show is about. There's an island off the coast of Nova Scotia called Oak Island, and there are all sorts of legends about Oak Island and about... Um, about treasure being buried there and it, it's actually multiple stories of multiple treasures this is the uh, history channel oak island site you can go there and i think you can watch the episodes there i'm not sure uh, you may have to have cable to watch it or one of the streaming services uh, i use philo but in any rate, if you can get a hold of it, I would highly recommend you watch at least one episode so you get a feel for it and see if it's something that might interest you. But um, this island off the coast of Nova Scotia is, has been rumored to have multiple treasures. For example, they have said that the Ark of the Covenant is buried there, that Shakespeare's works are buried there, that there's gold and silver and... and uh, some of it from a Spanish uh, uh, galleon that was sunk, that was uh, plundered by a British privateer and squirreled away on the island. Um, there's rumors or, or, or legends that the Knights Templar brought precious objects to the island, including the, the uh, what do they call it, the Holy Chalice. And, um, of course, you know, stories like that tend to be more fiction than truth most of the time. But in this case, um, I'm going to give you the link to this page. What's been found on Oak Island is absolutely fascinating. I mean, they have, this is a complete list, and I'm not going to go through the whole list with you. But just to give you an idea, they found Chinese coins. They found Roman coins. They have found British Spanish, Portuguese, and French coins. They have found uh, a stone pathway or road, if you will, that they dated to the 1200s. It's astounding. I mean, the, the amount of discoveries that have been made there and the archaeology that... And these guys are doing it right. They're doing scientific analysis of everything. They're, they're doing carbon dating they're using specialized equipment to analyze the metallic makeup of things. I mean, it, it, to me, it's just fascinating. It comes on every Tuesday at 8 o'clock in my time zone, and I watch it every Tuesday. I used to watch it on delay, but now I can't wait for Tuesday night to come up so I can see the next episode because it's exciting. I mean, they're, they're on the cusp right now of breaching a tunnel a man-made tunnel that's 95 feet underground and who knows what they'll find when they get in there and so i just wanted to bring that up to your attention if you're not aware of it i mean look at the list of stuff that they found it's unbelievable they found human bones they found uh, pieces of, of very expensive shoes they found uh, a lead cross that is tied to the templars they proved through testing that it came from southern France and dates back to 13 or 1400s. I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing, this stuff. And you, when you start watching it and you get a feel for what's going on, you think, I don't know if there's treasure here, but something important was going on in this place because there's just way too much 
man-made activity and way too much archaeology for it to just be a nothing place. The island wasn't even inhabited until the mid-1700s. And one of the first people to buy property on that island was a man named Samuel Ball. He was a slave. I don't know if he escaped from America or he was freed, but he went to Nova Scotia and bought property on this island and mysteriously became very wealthy. A lot of people believe that he found treasure on the island and used it to make himself wealthy. But, I mean, there's so many stories, and it's like, you, I can't wait for the next episode because I can't wait to see what they're going to uncover next. They keep pulling up uh, wood from 100, 150 feet underground, wood underground, that dates back to the 13 and 1400s. That doesn't make any sense. They, they, uh, there's a man-made swamp on the island, man-made, and they've been draining that and digging it up every year, and they've discovered that wa that road that I told you about, the Portuguese stone road, but uh, this last episode, they dug up some tree stumps, and those tree stumps were dated to the 13th or 14th century AD, and these were tree stumps that were uh, obviously the trees were cut and the stump was left behind and so the rest of the tree was used to make logs for something but the stumps themselves date to the 13th or 14th century AD so it's just to me it's a fascinating show it combines two of my real interests which is history and archaeology and, and I just love watching it and I thought I'd bring it up to you because you know I like to bring things up to you that maybe you're not aware of that, that I think you might enjoy that could become something that interests you. So that's my news for the day. As always, I pray for you. I pray that you will be abundant, that you'll have an abundant life, that you will live a long time and that you'll be healthy and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.